Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and tonight I'm going to be starting another reading vlog. And this reading vlog is mostly going to consist of new thrillers and one new horror novel that I'm very excited about. I have so many books on my TBR this month and I'm so overwhelmed by everything that I would want to read, but I figured these four books would be a good place for me to start. The four books that I do plan to read for this video, I want to read All's Well by Mona Awad and I actually ended up just downloading the audiobook from Libro right now because I read the first chapter of this book the other day and I found it to be a little bit dense but I felt like it would work really well as an audiobook because we're so in this main character's head already and I I just re-listened to the first chapter as an audiobook and I feel like the audiobook is so good already so I feel like that's definitely the way to go for me so far. I think tonight I'm actually just going to curl up in bed and follow along in the book and listen to the audiobook um, but this one's this horror novel we're following this woman named Miranda Fitch. She lives with excruciating chronic pain and then she's like the director of this uh, college theater production that's putting on one of Shakespeare's plays that's all's well that ends well and I don't really want to know anything more than that because so far we've just kind of been introduced to her and she seems like she's in a lot of pain and then today I got in the mail The Perfect Family by Robin Harding and this is one that I am so freaking excited to read because this one goes on sale August 10th. I usually end up feeling pretty meh about her books but I always go to reach for her new books because I just love her writing style and I love her stories. They're just so fascinating to me even though they always end up being around a three star but I still always want to read her new releases so I'm very excited for this one. And then I also want to read the new Lisa Jewell, The Night She Disappeared. This one is an art copy that I have from Atria and this one goes on sale September 7th and this is one that I am so excited to read because Lisa Jewell is my thriller queen. I absolutely love her. And then lastly for this video, I'm going to be reading In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife. And this is one that I've been hearing so much about this book on Instagram specifically. I don't know. I feel like on BookTube, I haven't really heard anyone talk about this. But on Instagram, there's so many accounts that I follow that just absolutely love this book. So I'm very excited. And this one takes place on a college campus. We're following six friends like 10 years after they've graduated college. And then we go flashback in time because one of the friends was murdered and then one of the other friends was blamed for the murder, like accused of the murder. So yeah, these are the four books that I'm planning to read for this video. I am starting with All's Well tonight because I am just so curious and I really do enjoy this audiobook. Like the narrator's already doing a great job. Good morning. So last night I listened up to page 108 or just about page 108 up to chapter 10. And so far I feel like this book is just really sad so far which I wasn't really expecting or at least like I just feel so much sympathy for this main character that it's making me sad and like angry because you know we're following this woman who is just dealing with this chronic pain from this accident that she had and we just get to see her suffer and like nobody believes her with her pain or at least like they don't believe that she's in as much pain as she's claiming or they think it's like all in her head or whatever and she's getting this from her friends she's getting this from her doctors and it's just sad and it's frustrating and honestly like the beginning of this book i mean i don't really know where i expect this to go but i know like the description mentioned something about her reaching her breaking point and honestly if i were in her shoes i would get it i would also reach a breaking point and just from the way that this book is so far i feel like it's kind of reminding me of the movie joker just because it's like the way that we see her get treated by everyone in her life and by society and everything it's almost like everything in her life is pushing her to reach this breaking point and then we're going to see what happens when that happens. I mean, I feel like even this cover looks like it's almost Joker inspired. Like, is it just me? I don't know. I feel like even the title of this book being All's Well is like so ironic because they keep saying like, oh, you're fine, right? Like, all's well, you know? And just kind of like, almost like mocking her with that. Like, they don't want her to complain about how badly she feels all the time. But it's just like, it's so sad. Like, my heart is literally breaking for this main character because I just can't imagine being in so much pain and like having everyone just kind of like, not really acknowledge it or just try to brush it off. Like, it's just frustrating and I'm frustrated for her. I think today, I don't really know what my plans are today, to be honest. I have the day off and I don't really have anything planned, which is pretty rare for me. And ever since I got a new AC in my room, I haven't really, like, spent a day just, like, hanging out in my room in the AC. So I feel like this morning I'm probably going to go to Starbucks or something, get something to eat. And then when I get home, I might either choose to just listen to this on audio 
like all day today or I might end up starting one of the other thrillers just because I feel like I do want to read something physically today and I do want to save this to listen to on audio throughout the whole week, you know? I got all the way up to part three of All's Well, which puts me at about like 235 pages in. And I wasn't even really planning on like reading this all morning long, but I was just gonna like listen to this while I ate my Starbucks and then I was gonna like switch to a different book. But it just got so interesting. And there was just something happening in the plot that I was like, no way. Like I was starting to pick up on what was happening and I was just so fascinated by it that I couldn't stop reading it. And so now I'm 67% of the way through the book and I only have like a little bit more left like just this little side here but i do think i'm going to put it down for today god this book is just so fascinating like i don't know if i enjoy this concept more than bunny like i think bunny was a lot more strange and weird but this is definitely pretty weird as well but um i'm just absolutely fascinated by this main character and what's going on I feel like the reason though why I'm probably not going to end up liking this book as much as Bunny is because I'm not like a huge fan of like theater and like Shakespeare and that kind of thing but I feel like if you are this book will be right up your alley like oh my gosh if you're like really into theater I think you would probably absolutely love this and yeah sorry my AC just kicked on I had to put on a sweatshirt because it was getting kind of cold in here and I just like love that so much. Like my AC is set at like 67 degrees but it's only about 70 degrees in my room, like on my room temperature but oh my god it's amazing! It's August and I'm wearing a sweatshirt! Hello! I haven't seen you in like 24 hours. Because <laughs> last night I actually just ended up having a really um, chill afternoon. I really wasn't reading anything. I ended up filming a couple ASMR videos and then I ended up downloading the app Likewise and oh my god I spent so much time just liking books, liking movies, liking TV shows, and creating playlists. I liked over 200 things and so I just kind of spent the afternoon doing that and I had dinner so late last night and then I was literally up until like 3 30 in the morning because my stomach was so upset and I couldn't sleep. Yeah, now it's like 11.30 the next morning, but I did want to let you know that really late last night when my stomach was upset at like 1 in the morning, I started The Perfect Family and I got 52 pages into this book and so far I'm already really loving it. Tank, can you like chill, bro? Say hello. Say hello. Tank just had some breakfast. Mm-hmm. It was real good, huh, Tinky? <laughs> yeah anyways i'm really loving the perfect family already so far because i had forgotten what the description or what the premise of this book even was but we're following this family who like one morning their house gets pelted with eggs confused as to like who would have done this you know because this family it's this husband and wife thomas and viv and then they have two teenage children well actually one of them is like in college so he, he's probably a little bit older but the other one is like a teenage daughter. But it's interesting because uh, this book is told from the point of view of all four members of the family. So we're going back and forth between the husband, the wife, the son, and the daughter. And it's interesting because all of them have these like freaky secrets that they're trying to keep from each other. And it's just very entertaining, you know? It's like, it's some entertaining shit. And so already I'm invested, like already. I'm having my suspicions and doubts about all four of these characters. Like they're all kind of shady and weird. And I feel like that's what, what I love about Robin Harding's books is she always has like the most interesting premises, premises for thrillers, but almost always her characters are all very unlikable, but like I don't even care when I'm reading a thriller, you know? So yeah, I'm excited. I feel like today, um, I don't work today until four. So I feel like this afternoon right now i just ordered a vitality bowl off of doordash so i'm waiting for that to come right now and then i think this morning and this whole afternoon i'm just gonna 
focus on reading this book because I'm really enjoying it and I would like to get a good chunk of this done today. Yeah. side note here but I just discovered this guy's YouTube channel Mr. Ballin and he does these like creepy story videos where he like story tells about something that's like a local legend or something that's happened and his videos are so good and I've just been sitting here I watched three of them while I was just eating my food here and the valley of headless men is like so fucking creepy and so terrifying <laughs> Sure. Alright, it is now 4 o'clock and I am on the way to work, but I wanted to let you know that I got up to page 215 of The Perfect Family this afternoon, and I'm really enjoying this. I feel like this is one of those thrillers that just reads really fast. Uh, it's, you know, constantly changing the point of view of each one of these characters and all of them have something interesting going on That's like a secret and nobody else knows about it And they're all worried like maybe these threats against our house are because of them And for a while there I was like has anybody told this family that se security cameras exist Like you can get those for your house because I was getting so frustrated That these things kept happening to their house and they weren't thinking to like put up security cameras or something But it's still it's just really interesting and I feel like now now at, at like 200 pages in things are really coming to a head and it's only about like a 330 ish page book so I'm hoping that I can finish it later because I only have like that tiny sliver left for now I'm on the way to work and uh, tonight after work we actually have a dinner for our restaurant because our restaurant actually won a competition we had this competition going over the summer against the five other restaurants that the owners of my company own and we won the competition so um because of that we're going out to dinner tonight as a crew and so it should be pretty fun and i don't know i'm probably not gonna be back home until later I just had a really, really wonderful and fun dinner with all of my crew at our restaurant. Well, I mean, the dinner wasn't our, at our restaurant, but all of the people that I work with in our restaurant went out to this dinner and it was so much fun. I just like, I just really, really love the people that I work with. Like seriously, my coworkers at my restaurant are some of my closest friends. Like they're literally the closest friends that I have in Washington and I just love and adore all of them so much. And it was genuinely such a fun time. Like I just really love anytime we all get to go out and like hang out together. We all have a blast. We just all vibe really well together. <laughs> and it was so funny because I actually left my um, other camera at work because this is the camera that I like to take to work to like film time lapses and stuff while I'm at work because I don't really care if this one gets dirty because it's damaged. You know, this is the one with the with a giant crack on the screen. I left this camera at work and it was so funny because one of our new hires there, Ben, he was like, he texted me and he was like, do you want me to bring your camera to the dinner? And I was like, yes, oh my God, I can't believe I left it at work. That's a first, I've never left my camera at work. I've left my book. I've left my book at work, but not my camera. So that's so funny, we've been reunited, it's great. I figured I would kind of like lay over here closer to the light over where the light is over here and finish the perfect family because it's only about 11.30 right now, but I feel like I'm gonna stay up for a little bit because I just ate so much food and I drank a bit. Not going to bed anytime soon. I also did um, listen a tiny bit more to the All's Well audiobook. I just listened to it on the way to work and on the way back from work. So I got a few more chapters in and this book is just so... 
it's like strange but now I'm thinking like I don't even know if this book is horror or not like it's not really feeling like it's horror it's feeling just more I don't know kind of like magical and kind of strange but not really horror like not really horror the same way Bunny was so yeah I don't know how I feel about it yet but anyways let's finish this one gosh okay it's been an hour but I just finished the perfect family and oh my gosh okay starting like a little bit towards the end there i was like okay this is probably gonna be like a three star because robin harding she always has like my favorite thriller premises but then all of her books usually end up being around a three star for me i think i said that earlier this one was looking to be the same because i was like okay like it was starting to get a little bit like drag like it just felt like it was starting to drag just a tad but i actually thought there was a twist towards the ending that i thought was pretty good that i didn't see coming and the way this book ended like oh my god it needs to be a four star just for that reason alone this is like one of those books that has like a shocking like thing as like the last sentence and i love that and i don't know i'm super impressed like this might be my favorite robin harding that i've read so far so that's really awesome yeah, this was like a lovely surprise. This actually reminded me because I just finished reading um, Not, a ha Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lupina like right at the start of August and this one like The Perfect Family. It just kind of reminded me of that book a little bit just because they both have the have this like family drama at the center of the story and we're following like the siblings and the adults and I don't know it just kind of reminded me of that book but I'm super impressed. I really enjoyed this one which makes me so happy. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it but it's raining right now. Like, what the heck? It's actually raining. It is actually raining right now. This is what dreams are made of. Like, this This is amazing. <laughs> it's been so long. Listen to your body, of course. Brianna doesn't answer me. Just sits, you are missed. Well, Grace isn't here, is she? Different sources, different interpretations, am I right? I think Shakespeare would have wanted the king to do a jumping... Yum. So while I was eating breakfast, I finished listening to All's Well on audio. And I don't know how I feel about this book. I mean, one thing is for sure, and that is that Mona Awad knows how to freaking write. Like, her writing is absolutely engaging in this book. It's just so interesting. She's just really good at writing, and it's really, like, beautifully written. This book makes you feel like you can feel Miranda's pain, you know? Because, like, this writing is just so well done. I feel like it's pretty rare for me to find books that are about characters that experience chronic pain. Because I don't experience chronic pain myself, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I feel like it really is. And so, just for the writing alone, I feel like this book is definitely worth reading and this book is really something special. But also, I feel like to call this book a horror novel is kind of a stretch. I don't really think that this should be classified as horror. I think it's more like, you know, magical realism. I did enjoy the ending for the most part, even though I feel mostly confused and a lot of it went over my head. But I do appreciate books that are really weird like this. Like, honestly, I feel like if I enjoyed Shakespeare in like theater more, I probably would have loved this. I don't know. I feel like with this one, it's so strange because I can see why people might love this book and I can see why people might hate this book. And I feel that way kind of about Bunny as well, but Bunny was just a little bit more up my alley with like the, the weirdness and the horror, <laughs> whereas this one just kind of felt like it's a really good book, but it's just not my thing personally. But anyways, yeah, I'm done with All's Well, which is exciting. And now I'm going to start The Night She Disappeared. Well, I am heading into work now and earlier today I only got 45 pages into this book because I started reading it and then I fell asleep and I took a nap for like an hour and it's good so far but there's just there's so many characters that my brain was just like too tired. There's three different timelines we're jumping back and forth between 2016, 2017, and 2018 and keeping the timeline straight and all the characters straight was like stretching my brain and then I think I just got tired and fell asleep. But either way, I do plan to read some more of it later tonight when I get home, but for now I am off to work.
last night we ended up watching Suicide Squad on HBO Max and I'm not gonna lie I actually enjoyed it which I was pretty surprised by because I wasn't a huge fan of the first movie I honestly only watched these because my sister is a huge fan of Harley Quinn and like DC and it was actually pretty good like I don't know I thought the first half was like not that great but then the second half really redeemed itself and I thought it was actually really fun and like the concept was really interesting. I mean, it was a little heavy on the gore for my personal taste. It was just like, that was unnecessary. But I don't know, like for the most part, I was pretty surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I just wasn't expecting to enjoy it that much. So that was fun. And by the time we finished watching the movie, it was already like 12.30 in the morning. So I didn't end up reading anything last night. Now today, it's August 8th. It's my dad's birthday. So we're getting ready to go and spend the day with my dad. And I'm just gonna go pick up an acai bowl because they have their August bowl now. It's the Brainiac bowl at Vitality and it's one of my faves and I haven't had it yet. So I wanna go and get that. Wow, look at that. Oh, stunning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my parents house i had a really lovely day with my dad for his birthday yeah now i'm jumping back into this book i did get the chance to read a little bit of this book earlier today when i was just chilling with the tank and i got up to page 92 so barely made more of a dent in this and so far i feel like this book is really good it's just had a it's had kind of a slow start, but I'm really excited to see where this story goes because I already have a couple of different theories going. I don't know, I just think Lisa Jewell is a really great storyteller, so I'm excited to see where it goes, but I'm just gonna lay here for a little bit and read. Oh my god, what is the heck? Cinnamon streusel coffee cakes. Okay, so last night I ended up staying up until like 1.30 in the morning reading this book. I got up to page 317 and I got all the way to part four and I read so much of it last night and I'm not even gonna lie, like the first 100 or 150 pages of this book, I was like low-key considering DNFing it, like just being fully honest, like I just wasn't really that invested, I wasn't really enjoying it. And then somewhere along the way, I just really started to care and I just really got into this book and then I couldn't put it down. Like I just couldn't put it down. I had to know what's going on. I only have a tiny little like <laughs> sliver left. Like I have less than a hundred pages left and I'm planning on finishing it today. I've just been kind of busy because I've been trying to film a couple different videos and you know, I am so excited to finish this book. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Can't wait to finish it. I can't wait to see where it goes. The one thing I will say though is that I'm not a huge fan of Sophie's point of view in this book. She has the point of view that's in the year 2018, which is after the events that have happened. I just feel like her point of view is really unnecessary and I know it's probably going to tie in at the end and that's why the point of view is gonna be there in the first place. But so far, I feel like her point of view is just completely pointless and just kind of boring. I'd rather just be following the girl Tallulah's point of view in the past before she went missing and then the mom in the present day when they're trying to figure out where she went i think that would be a lot more interesting and i just don't i just don't really care about this other girl's point of view that's like in the future when you know it's been a year after she's gone missing like it's just it just seems so pointless so hopefully it does connect and it like fits and we can figure out why but anyways i'm so excited to finish this i just need to finish filming this video, I'm trying to film it and my other camera battery just died, so I'm like, ah, fuck. And I feel like I've been filming for the last like two and a half hours or three hours or so and I'm just, I'm tired. It's so exciting because me and my sister are going to go to either like TJ Maxx or Home Goods after this because I've heard that they started putting Halloween stuff out there in the world. Okay, we're on the way to Home Goods, but I recently got this little cute like Arrowheads gum. It opens like this. It's so weird, but I haven't tried it yet. So I wanted to try it. It's like watermelon flavor, but I don't know if this is for children or not. <laughs> what the heck? It has like candy in it. Huh? It says micro, micro candies are in it. Is it like Yeah. What the heck? You wanna try it? Um, just try it if you don't like it. Just spit it off. Why wouldn't I like it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
micro candy. Texture is a little weird. <laughs> it's the micro candies. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's good though, right? Um, yeah. The flavor's there. I mean, I would buy, I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> I would. I like all things watermelon. <laughs> I know, but I don't think I like the micro candy in there. Mm. We made it. Mm, it's so cute. I love that. Oh my god, creep it real. <laughs> oh my god. I <laughs> love it. So Something that we can just do. So cute. So cute. This love in love. Oh, you're beautiful. Amazing. And look at all the blue. All the blue pumpkins. Oh my god, what? These are some dark clouds in the distance. On to the next, on, on to the next, which is Valley Village. Quick little haul. Um, I got this giant fluffy thing because since I've been reading over here a lot at night because it's so dark in this corner now, I wanted something comfy and I've been eyeing these for a while. Like I've been really wanting one and it's so cute and so fluffy. And then at Valley Village, I got this cute little tiny purse because I was wanting something really small because I'm leaving for Vegas in a week and I wanted to have something small and it's so cute and it can easily fit in my backpack. And then for a book, I found Catch and Kill for so cheap, only $3.99 for this hardcover. And I've been wanting to read this book for like literally forever. Amazing, this is like the book that's a nonfiction book that's about Harvey Weinstein. And then I just got a bunch of like really cute clothes. I got this like Oxford sweatshirt because I don't know why I'm obsessed with owning <laughs> stuff for colleges that I've never been to. But yeah, I got this like really cute kind of like green crop shirt. I got this really cute Alaska shirt because I'm just obsessed with Alaska lately. This really cute like yellow cozy shirt. I don't know. I don't own a lot of colors. So camo jean sweats from Hollister. They're like literally Hollister brand. And I got them so cheap and they're so cute. And then I also got a couple cute pairs of shorts. I really wanted to have shorts in this like green and then um, these really cute high-waisted shorts that are camo. Okay, like these are so cute. Are they not? I kind of forgot how much I hate high-waisted things, but like <laughs> they're so cute. Okay, I know they don't really go together, but like look at how cute. I love this green shirt. It's like it has a really nice texture to it actually. And then these are actually so cute. Like, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about them, but I actually love them. Like, I can wear these to the gym and shit. Like, these are, uh, these are cute. So, it's just past 11 o'clock at night, and me and my sister just finished watching the season finale of The Bachelorette. And, like, no spoilers or anything, but, like, god damn, what a mess. Like, what a hot-ass mess. I feel like the show almost always ends in a hot-ass mess, but, like, especially this year, yikes but anyways right before the show started i actually finished reading the night she disappeared and this book was such a lovely surprise i mean as i was saying i wasn't really enjoying it too much in the beginning but god the ending was just so amazing and so satisfying i feel like this is one of those rare thrillers where i didn't really find the ending to be very shocking but it was still just such a good story that I didn't mind. I feel like this one kind of reminds me a lot of Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell because we have a similar thing happening in the premise, you know, where it's like this girl goes missing and we're kind of following from the mom's point of view, like some time after the girl's gone missing. And so really at the core of this story is this really like beautiful mother-daughter relationship. And I just grew to like care so much about these characters and the ending was like shocking in a way, but it's not necessarily something that I think is super hard to predict, you know? Like I definitely saw where most of the story was going, but it was still just an amazing journey getting there and I just really enjoyed my time reading this. I don't know, I feel like this is gonna be somewhere between a four and a 4.5 for me. I think that's something that's really unique about Lisa Jewell and her thrillers is that she really makes you emotionally invested in the story, which is pretty rare for thrillers. I feel like usually for thrillers, like you don't really care a whole lot about the characters. For me with like Lisa Jewell's books, I always find myself so emotionally invested. It's late at night, I might have to edit a video tonight. So I don't know how much I'm gonna be reading. Like, we'll see if I can get it done tonight. But if I decide to not edit and just like do that a different night, then I'm gonna be starting in my dreams I hold a knife and I'm so excited. I also, oh my gosh, look what I just got in the mail today from Penguin Random House. Velvet was the night. Oh, 
This is Sylvia Moreno Garcia's new book, you know, she's the author of Mexican Gothic. So like, yeah, very excited about this. It's actually like a lot shorter than I was expecting it to be, but like, oh my gosh, just add it to my already overwhelming TBR this month. Like there are so many good books coming out in the month of August. Hello, good morning. Um, So last night I only got about 40 pages into In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and so far I'm actually really enjoying it. I feel like it's really um fleshing out the six characters, you know, because if you didn't know this book follows this protagonist named Jessica Miller and she is in the present day she's 10 years out of college and she is like the first woman to be promoted at this like law firm in New York City she has like an amazing job she's well established and she's a little bit like narcissist narcissistic like her personality is like you know I don't know like she just likes to stare at herself in the mirror and she thinks she's like really perfect now and we're jumping back and forth in timelines from 10 years after college when they're all having a reunion and going back to the college and then we also get flashbacks to when they were all in college together and it's following these six friends and it's interesting because we find out right at the beginning of the book that one of the friends was murdered and then one of the other friends was accused of the murder and so it's kind of interesting to go jumping back and forth like we already know who was murdered in their friend group and we have an idea of who was accused but it's just uh, really interesting so far. Like I really love their friendships, um, but also reading this book last night just gave me a nightmare about high school. So I didn't love that. <laughs> But yeah, that kind of sucked, but otherwise, um, I'm really enjoying this so far, and I'm bringing it to work with me because I do work all day today, so hopefully I'll get a break and I can read some more on my break today. And in the case of people who have some type of profile, some type of- Hi, I'm on my lunch break. Um, it's about 1.30. I just made a quick little cute sandwich, and um, I'm going to be jumping back into the book. I'm kind of scared, though, to eat, and you know, I don't want to get my dirty fingers all over it, but whatever. some dinner for myself i just bought like chicken like rotisserie chicken from safeway and then i made cauliflower i like to put it in the oven and put some spices on it and then we got the asparagus and i made biscuits oh so, hello it is the next morning already yesterday i barely read in my dreams i hold a knife i read like 20 pages maybe when i was in the office I'm at page 70 right now and then I didn't get the chance to read it all last night because when I got home from work I was so tired and I ended up having to edit that video that I talked about the other day because I didn't edit it the other day and the editing process took a little bit longer than I was expecting and I was just so tired and exhausted after editing that so I just went straight to bed but this morning I've actually had a decent morning I went to the gym for the first time in a while and I worked out and I feel really good and then I got a vitality bowl again and yeah now it's almost one o'clock and we're just chilling god I don't know how I feel about this yellow shirt like I feel like it looks so cute on me in real life but I feel like on camera it's really like washing me out Ooh. I think I'm just gonna spend the day like reading this book hopefully I can get through a good chunk of this today and um, today is the first day of the heat wave in Washington where I'm at right now. It's supposed to get up to, well, it's not supposed to get too hot today. It's only supposed to get up to like maybe 89, but then tomorrow is gonna be like the hottest day of the heat wave. And then Friday is also gonna be pretty warm. <clears throat> so um, that's unfortunate because I work all day tomorrow, but for today I can go in my room, which I've turned on the, my little AC. And so it should be pretty nice and cool in my room. But we'll see if Tang wants to go in there with me because, you know, he likes being outside, even when it's hot. Hello, it's a little bit later in the day. Yes, I changed, um, but I am 170 pages into In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and <laughs> I am absolutely loving this. Like, I'm kind of obsessed. It's very, um, you know, it's very just like gossip drama vibes kind of because it's like these six friends and like they're all kind of like accusing each other for things that have like happened in their past and it's just like so interesting. And also, it's been a long time since I've read like a really good love triangle, you know? You, you know what you should have said? <laughs> what? 
Yes, I changed, but I have not changed my opinion <laughs> of this set. Yes, I have changed my clothes, but I have not changed my feelings. Yeah. But um, anyways, now we're in the car because we wanted to go get our nails done today because we're leaving for Vegas, you know, soonish. Soonish. Soonish, like a little less than a week. So um, we wanted to go and get them done today. Look at this cute new little pizza place that just opened nearby. It's called Sliced. So we're gonna try it. Okay, I wanna see the nails. <laughs> so she went for the color she always goes for. <laughs> which is, what did you say? It's mod. 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 Same color as her shirt. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Meanwhile, I went with blue. Like that. Uh, I know this is very shocking to nobody. Um, blue is my favorite, but I've never actually had blue acrylics. So that's pretty cool. Are you no, I've only had black or white or like French manicure. But uh, no yeah. No color in your life. I know. So boring. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that I'm now 209 pages into this book. I barely read a little bit after we got home from dinner. That new pizza restaurant was actually pretty good, by the way. Like, I really enjoyed that. And then we went and got our nails done. I really do love this color of blue. It's really growing on me so much. Really enjoying this book. And I feel like I want to try and like savor this. So I don't know if I want to blast through this whole thing tonight, but also it's only 10.30 at night, so I feel like I'm going to want to finish it because I have at least two hours to sit here and re read right now. So I'm probably going to try finishing this tonight just because uh, it's just so good. I can't wait. found this Dark Academia music playlist. So we're going to listen to this while I read. Set the mood, you know? Oh my god. So... I just finished reading it and I loved this book so fucking much. Like I loved it. I loved it so much. I think this is in like one of my top favorites of the year. I loved it. The ending nearly had me crying. I was gasping. I was surprised. I feel like a lot of times I can always predict the killer but not the motive for like why they did it. And this book was just... Ugh. It was just so well written. It was like a perfectly crafted mystery. And I don't know if it's because I was listening to like this Dark Academia playlist while I was reading these final 100 pages, but some scenes were literally giving me like chills all over my body because they were just written so well. And some parts were like making me fucking cry almost. Like there's the scene where she's like talking about this flashback that she's having when she's like at the beach. And she's like, I want to stay here submerged forever above the surface. All of the days of my life were waiting like a promise. There was nothing but a blank slate and anything goes. And what if my life could mean anything? I could become anyone as long as I didn't break surface. As long as I stayed here suspended in this beautiful infinite now. Like, I'm sorry, bitch. What? That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I can't get over how well written this book was and how fleshed out each one of these characters was. Like I could picture them all so clearly in my head and I love a good mystery like this because there was so many times in this book where I thought any one of their friends could have been the killer. And I love when that happens because I love when we have a reason to be suspicious of everyone. And I love that Jessica is like this totally you know, flawed character. Like, she's almost a character that's like, do you want to root for her? Or do you not want to root for her? Like, she's definitely not that great of a person. But it honestly just made her even more interesting to read about because at times I was like, girl, what you doing? Wow. I can't believe this is a debut thriller. Like, I just, I can't believe this. Definitely one of the best thrillers that I've read this year. And it's just, ah, uh, it's gonna be a favorite. Like, I can see myself rereading this and I just want to like push this book on everyone. Like seriously, if you like books that are like dark academia vibes that follow like a group of students, you need to read this. Oh my god, it's just oh, it's so good. It has been about 24 hours since I last saw you, but I just wanted to wrap up this reading vlog because I read four books during this reading vlog. And I honestly still can't get over how good uh, this book was. I messaged my friend Isabel over on Instagram. Uh, her username is like the crime bookshelf. I let her know how much I love this because she was like a huge reason why I wanted to pick this up in the first place because I saw her glowing five-star review of it and we usually have really similar taste when it comes to thrillers, horrors, and romances. Like we are just twinning on so many levels and so I'm so glad that I ended up loving this probably just as much as she did and we were just like fangirling in DMs for a while because it's just... 
It's so good. It's one of my favorite thrillers that I've read this year. And I'm so stoked that I had a five star read in this reading vlog. Like that's amazing. And I think my second favorite would definitely have to be The Night She Disappeared. This one was also just really, really great. Then I liked The Perfect Family next. And unfortunately, all is well just didn't end up really being my thing. I mean, I can see other people really loving or really hating this book. Like I can see a lot of uh, different opinions on this one, but this one was just fine for me. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. But yeah, overall, I feel like it's been a really successful couple of reads. Like I haven't read anything that I've really disliked. So that is a great sign so far. And I'm not even nearly close to done with all of the books that I would like to read this month. This was just a very small dent in my overwhelming TBR. I mean, Razorblade Tears is probably going to be the next book that I pick up, but I'm saving that book for a very specific vlog that I would like to do. Hopefully that happens. But if that specific vlog idea starts to fall apart, I think I might just do another like thriller reading vlog immediately after this one. So yeah, let me know if you've read any of these four books books, what are your thoughts on them, or if you're looking forward to reading any of these books, let me know that as well. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye!